Hi, I'm Jessica from Jessica Wanders, and today I'm gonna to be canning up chicken broth. I've had these chicken broths in my freezer for some time. I've accumulated enough that I'm gonna pressure can uh, some chicken broth. So first thing is I'm gonna pop them open and make sure that there's no fat on top. I am going to cook up these chicken carcasses it's in this big pot and make up some chicken broth. No, it was one fairly large chicken carcass. Looks like it has quite a bit of meat on it, so that's awesome. I'm gonna grab some rosemary for the broth and some of this thyme and some parsley. Parsley green stems have a lot of flavor in them, but don't look very nice dried. I'm gonna chop them and use them for this, this broth because it's gonna be filtered kind of eventually anyways. Rosemary and some thyme. gonna add some broken bits of bay leaf. I'm gonna strain this so I might as well use up my broken bits. The equivalent of one bay leaf. A few peppercorns I'm thinking. I'm gonna keep that on low and let it cook for a long time, maybe six hours. I am also trying to find, there was a bag of like onion scraps that I had but since I organized the freezer, <laughs> organized it. Ah, oh, there it is. Onion scraps. These onion bits, the skins, make your broth really that yellow, that cool yellow color, which is awesome always. I mean, how much do you need in there? Like all of it? I'm just gonna go for it. Then I used up that whole bag. Right away, it gets that really nice yellow color from those onion skins. Makes your chicken stock look so beautiful. Okay, I took the chicken and all the onion and veggies and stuff out of the broth. I have some broth. And I'm gonna pour this broth through my jelly bag. And hopefully make something that looks amazing. It does, it does look amazing. Yum, yum. So now I have my chicken broth and the chicken that came off of the chicken carcass that I had. I don't need all this chicken broth to make some soup, so you know what? I'm gonna end up with more containers of chicken broth. If you're watching my freezer challenge, you'll know that I'm trying to get stuff out of my freezer. Here's a link to that freezer challenge ongoing right now. Yeah, we're gonna can up some chicken broth. I'm just gonna check it out. Mm, this one's still kind of frozen. Doesn't look like there's a ton of fat on the top of these. Tiny little bit there. This one might be more yellow. Sometimes I add like turmeric in there as well. So I'm just gonna skin off. I can see a little layer of fat on the top of that. I'm gonna try and get as much of it out as I can. So I use this book's recipe for the chicken stock. And I've got a Miro pressure canner. It's a weighted gauge pressure canner. Okay, these are what I have. <laughs> this one is substantially more yellow than the rest of them. I know that I put turmeric in this one. It smells a lot more like chicken soup than the other three. These just sort of smell like broth, but this definitely smells like chicken soup. I think when I mix them all together, it's going to be perfect. I've got this big pot and I'm going to heat them all up. I would have strained all of these through a jelly bag before I froze them. Any little bits you see made it through the jelly bag. Just gonna run it through a jelly bag one more time and see if we end up with a clear, clearer chicken broth. See what we can do. Should just run straight through. There's not a lot in there. See if we can get it a little clearer. You know, we 
just want the clearest broth that we can get. I don't think it did that much, but there's a little bit of gritty bits at the bottom of the jelly bag, so it did something. It's as clear as I can get it. heating up I'm going to prepare my canner and my canner jars and lids and all the stuff that I need to to can this up. My pressure canner takes two liters of water plus another 500 milliliters. It takes an extra 500 if I'm not doing a full canner load which I'm not doing. Two and a half liters of water and I add a tablespoon of white vinegar to the canner. It just keeps it from staining when I remember to add it. So there you go, one tablespoon of white vinegar. And we keep the vinegar around and handy for wiping the rims. When you're canning meats, you need vinegar to wipe the rims because it cuts through the grease better. I think that's why, but that's the procedure. On some canning recipes, pressure canning recipes, usually it involves meat. Here are my cans. I check them all for chips or cracks or anything, and then I wash them up and uh, I even ran them through the dishwasher, so they should be good and clean anyways. I've got my my lids and my rings, so I'm ready to go. I don't think I'm going to get more than four, but I have six jars just in case. It's better to be prepared. Well, I'm going to put the jars into the canner so they start to warm up. We want hot chicken broth into hot jars in the canner. So I did fill the jars also with a little bit of water just while they're sitting in here. But when I take the jars out to fill them, I'll be dumping that water out. It's just according to the Miro manufacturer's instructions on how to heat the jars up. I got about the same depth of water in the jars as is in the canner. I'll take them out, dump the water, fill them and put them back in again. And I'm going to try to bring this water up to like a simmer, but not a boil until I'm ready to use the jars. And I've got my headspace measure, my jar lifter, because jars are hot, and the jar filler funnel. And this is my weighted gauge for my pressure canner. It's pretty heavy. It's very weighted. I've got my vinegar ready and a paper towel to wipe the rims of the jars before I put the lids on and the rings on. Just bringing the broth up to a boil before we put it in the hot jars. That smells so good in here. Do I keep saying that? I think I do. I love the smell of chicken broth. <laughs> Makes me so hungry. It's really early in the morning. I'm trying to do it before it gets too hot out. So it's not really the time for eating chicken, chicken soup, but still smells yummy. There we go. All right, the jars are ready. A little bit of simmery water in there. I boiled the, the chicken broth. I think we're good to go. Chicken broth. Should really get a bigger ladle. It would speed things up a lot. One inch head space is pretty big. It's like the last one here. On these jars, it's kind of right where the, there's a little ring below the last below the last ring. So you start to learn where the where the spots are on your jars. Not quite there yet. Just about. One inch is a fair amount of head space, though. There we go. One inch head space. It touches the chicken broth. Perfect. Then we're going to wipe the rim with a paper towel dipped in vinegar. And then you just follow your manufacturer's instructions for your lids. Put your ring on. Screw down until resistance is met. 
and then tighten. I like to use these fingers and then I can't tighten it too much. Fingertip tight. And that's it. And back in the canner. One at a time I'm gonna do until they're all done. Make sure that your headspace thing is straight up and down when you measure. It makes a difference. There we go. Wipe your lid with your vinegar, paper towel. Put your lid on. Put your ring on. Tighten until resistance is met. And then fingertip tight. And into the canner. Okay, right, let's do a couple more. So resistance and then, oh, ow, that's hot. Jeez, that's hot. Don't forget your um, of glove is what you need. Oh no, chicken broth. And so we did get four pint jars. I do have a little bit left over, which is fine. Um, I might actually make some chicken soup with it. I have some leftover egg noodles to use. Here are my four jars. Lid on. Lid on and then lock it in. Bring it up to pressure over medium high heat. We're watching this little uh, vent at the top pretty closely. It's starting to kind of bubble. Not really venting steam yet. There we go. We're gonna vent steam for 10 minutes. For my altitude, I have to set my my pressure, weight of gauge pressure for 15 pounds pressure, not 10 pounds pressure. Uh, I find a fork is really useful for, for putting these things on top. Close it up. Ta-da. And we're gonna wait until it starts jiggling. Okay, okay. Now I know I have to turn my stove down. Uh, about two to keep it to keep it jiggling but we do start the timer now so for pint jars we need 20 minutes on the timer ah yes <laughs> so according to my uh instruction manual for my canner um when the control Jiggles vigorously, reduce the heat so that the control jiggles about three to four times per minute. I set my timer. I'm gonna see, see how many times it jiggles in a minute. That's one. That's two. That's 
three. Uh oh. That's four. So that's what we're looking for, three to four times a minute jiggling. So that's good. Gotta do that for 13 more minutes. Now that our time is up, I'm gonna shut the heat off and I'm gonna let the can cool off, reduce the pressure by itself. It usually takes about 45 minutes. It says to remove the canner from the heat. Definitely wanna let it come down in pressure all by itself to prevent siphoning when your, your liquids kind of come out of your jars. That's not good. So I'm gonna leave this for like 45 minutes until it's totally uh, depressurized. Yeah, and we'll come back, check back on it after that. I know like canning, like pressure canning scares a lot of people. I wanted to say there's like a locking mechanism. See that as the pressure reduces, that little metal locking thing will lift up. I could not open this canner even if I wanted to when it's under pressure because that locking me mechanism drops down. The other thing is uh, it has this kind of uh, fail safe. If it gets too high a pressure, it will blow this gasket right out. So it's not like you're pressure canner is going to come up to ridiculous pressures and then explode or anything. What's going to happen is this thing is going to pop out um, if the pressure gets too high uncontrollably. Um, so yeah, there are some safety measures. Um, and once you see how heavy duty kind of the, uh, the canners are, it's, it's a lot of metal. So yeah, I feel pretty safe pressure canning. You want to check i know there's a lot of controversy about pressure canning on glass top stoves i've been pressure canning on this particular glass top stove for about 20 years and i haven't had a problem i never do full canner loads like two layers two layers i only ever do one layer so maybe that's why i i think that the weight of the canner could crack could crack your glass top stove just from being so heavy but i never ever have ever done um two layers in in my canner so maybe I've been lucky, but it works for me. The heat stays fine. The heat works um, consistently. I get jiggles every three to four, three to four jiggles every minute. No problem with my glass top cook stove. I'm gonna let it come down in pressure and we'll come back and see where we are after that. Okay, I'm gonna take off this weighted gauge. Ah, going down in pressure. I don't know if you can see, but there's like a gap underneath that thing. I can definitely open the lid now because it's lifted up because the pressure's down. We're going to remove the lid and then wait for 10 more minutes. I just always want to open the lid away from you so that if there's steam, steam goes that way, not towards you. There they are. I'm going to wait 10 minutes. Wait 10 minutes, then we'll take them, the jars out. Looks very nice. They have a good color. It's an easy way, 20 minutes in a pressure canner, and then you've got your own chicken broth. 
think it's a great deal. I think it's awesome. I'm gonna wait 24 hours. These lids have all have all sealed. They're super hot, but uh, but they have all sealed. Wait 24 hours. Take the rings off. Wash them up and put them downstairs in the pantry. Here they are the next day. I'm just gonna take the rings off and then wash them. Rings should come off fairly easily. <laughs> Hard to do with one hand. Wash them up and label them. Beautiful. There we go. And then it goes into the pantry. One day I'll uh, I'll remember to put my lids on so that they're in the, right, in the right direction with the front of the jar. Eh, I never remember. And that's it, that's my chicken stock. If you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. You can click my face to subscribe to see more videos from me canning up things to put in my pantry, usually for my garden, although these are not my chickens. And I'll leave links to the entire canning playlist um, where I'm trying to put together a collection of all of my favorite canning recipes that I do. Thanks so much for being here. Bye guys.